Hello, I'm going to do something a little different today. I've made a dragon shape out of cardboard. I'll put some white paint and a little gesso on the canvas to stick that down. I'm going to use it as a stencil. I hope it works. It doesn't stick too much. And I'm going to pour acrylic paint into it. I will put a list of ingredients at the bottom, the materials I'm using. There are less expensive ones you can use, and I have put those down too. I had much fun using the cheaper ones and creating my paintings. I switched to the more expensive ones because they are more permanent and I do hope to sell my paintings. So I've mixed up some colours. I just left the last one, which is red, and I've left it over here, um, to show you. So some red paint. Put a little bit into a pot and I'm using coconut milk oil to make cells. It uh, smells pleasanter than the stuff you can use, which is WD-40. I haven't actually, I didn't notice any nasty smell when I was using WD-40, but uh, they do say it can smell and yellow over time, so I don't know. I just thought, well, I'll go to something that I know is better. Now I'm using Bookbinders glue. You can use PVA glue, as you'll see in my list. And I've got a jar of water there because it's quite handy to be able to put anything in while you've finished with it, so, and then wash it later. You've got to mix it really well. I seem to find the red makes little bubbly marks more than the rest. I don't know why. Right, now normally you'd have a bigger pot and pull them all into that, but I am rather hoping that they'll all go into one. Dribble them on top of each other, dribble, dribble, dribble. Any left I will find very useful for painting the edges, which I shall have to show you on a separate video. Pull the white in. And some orange, so I've got red, yellow, white and orange and poured it all into a pot whoops, something red drilled in there and I'm hoping that they'll stay within the borders of my piece of cardboard probably won't, but if it leaks a little bit, well I don't think that'll matter because it'll work in with the type of painting I'm doing. I'm going to paint the background anyway and if it blares a little bit that's okay. So now I'm going to flip the pot and wait a few seconds for all the paint to run down and then I'm hoping I will have a dragon shape. Probably find it's run everywhere. Try and wipe my thumb off. Helps to have some kitchen paper handy. Oh, I've got tissue. Yes, I've got a bit of tissue in my pocket. That's good. Of course, if this works, you can cut out any sort of shape, press it down, pour the paint on it, and then do the background later. I shall have to do the background in a separate video. I don't know if I just said that. Oh, uh, here it goes. Let's see if it stays within the margins of the dragon. No, then it's running a little bit. So. To tip it in a moment, but of course it's easy to hold this down. All right, let's do a little tip. Dragon wants a tail. And he wants a wing. You can use your palette knife or the wooden sticks like I'm using to drag the paint along where you want it but it seems to make better shapes if you can just let it flow. If it takes too long I shall find the cardboard will be stuck to my canvas which won't be a good idea. Let's just tweak that little bit into the little grooves and now flow this way please and that way. So 
to run into the tail. I better start and give you my head and I'll get the wooden stick and I'll scrape up some of that. Drop it down there. If you can just drop it down, it still makes some quite interesting shapes. It's if you try and spread it too much, certainly a paintbrush doesn't work. Put a little bit in the corner of his front leg. So it takes the time mixing the paint and then getting it to run where you want. Because if you're doing a the whole canvas you'd mix up a like a plastic cup full and just let it flow everywhere over the edges and everywhere but because I just want it inside the dragon shape I've mixed up quite a bit less all right that's got a front leg now I want to encourage that to go into his head got some of the yellow showing through it wasn't showing through before bumps, I don't quite know why that is, I think that's, the red paint seems to do that more. I should have mixed up the red and the one of the other colours in front of you, the speed. Right, now we're back this way because he wants a tail please and a back leg. So I'll tip it that way a bit more. It might be a a little bit in the pot that I can tip there. Look a bit left that didn't quite come out the first time around. I've got quite a bit more glue with this mixture because I wanted the dragon if possible to stand up above the background so that when I pour the background it doesn't cover him up. I'm just have to make sure he's breathing a bit of fire out of the front mouth, nostrils, where do dragons breathe fire from? Never actually met one so I'm not sure. I don't think I actually want to meet a live one either. Not unless he's a nice friendly one like you see in some of the movies. Right, now then, the next thing is how long can I leave that for? I should just give it a few seconds. And then lift the stencil off and see what we end up with. If it runs past a little bit, I think that'll be okay because it'll look kind of semi abstract more. And I'll put some similar colours in the background. Right, let's lift it and see. That's not bad actually. I don't know what I do with the messy stencil, I'll put it in my sink for now. a sink in your studio. Now he wants perhaps a little bit more of a head and I did think that if he had some little spiky bits on his tail they would look good. Perhaps on the wing as well. I'll get the the little bits that I've run over, I don't think that'll matter, they'll blend in with the background but also I can go around them with a paintbrush and just put something to highlight the edges of the dragon a bit more maybe. Black perhaps. And he did have a little bumpy bit there that I drew in. Perhaps that's where he breathes the fire from. Kind of got this idea because when you are doing the paws, you often see shapes of it looks a bit like an animal or a face that you hadn't actually intended, but they just appear. And then I thought, well, it would be quite good if I could create one like that. But they don't seem to appear quite where you want them unless you've got something like a stencil. Wipe that bit off, blend it into the background. And while I've got some paint there, I could. Put a little 
I'm look at if he's breathing a bit of fire and I can put that in later with some more paint. To red perhaps. Is he drawing it up to his mouth? And there we have a dragon breathing fire. And I'll put the background in later when the glue and everything's set and the paint and paint around the edges a little bit. But there we have our dragon. Please come back later and see the finished product. And thank you very much for watching.